Hey, good morning. All right, so this is what I was trying to do yesterday. And I, I made the video and I put it up, but I, I drove to work, tried to upload it, and it just was taking like hours and hours and hours for some reason. When I left work or was getting ready to leave work after being there almost eight hours already, still said there was some hours left, so I just deleted it. So maybe it was something not quite right. But anyways, I'm gonna go over this. I'm gonna read something to you, because look, the spirituals played out in the physical, and, and I hope you can see it. You know, only only Jesus Christ can uh, awaken you spiritually, your spiritual eyes, so you can have understanding of what's actually happening here in this world. But understand this. Um, so before I read this, I'm just going to say check with your doctor or anything, you know, but understand where we're at and what's going on. Viral shedding. Okay, and this is right off of Google. Viral shedding is the expulsion and release of a virus progeny, the children of a virus, right? Virus progeny, progeny, children. Virus progeny following successful reproduction during a host cell infection. Infection, a host cell infection. Once replication has been completed and the host cell is exhausted of all resources in making the viral progeny, the viruses may begin to leave the cell by several different methods. Then, and that's basically a description of viral shedding. And look, all they really needed was one third, a third of everybody to get that, and then it would spread to the rest. Okay, so understand that, a third, that's significance, that's 33, right? 33, that number 33 seems to keep popping up in a lot of places, a lot of things, right? Now, um, something that was, uh, there, you know what, I'll just flash you this real quick so you, you, you get where I'm coming from. Because, um, look, I'm going to attach a couple of videos to this and look at them. There's, and, and it ain't just the videos that I attach. There's, there's literally hundreds of people in this field who looked at these very same thing and found the very same thing. Okay, and this ain't all that's in there. There's something else in there as well. But look at this. Look at this. Okay. Okay. So there's that. Now, this kind of mimics this this from greek mythology right the hydra the hydra you cut one of its heads off and another grows back you cut it in pieces and, and each piece becomes its own right so understand that now there, there's spiritual meaning here so so hopefully you'll catch it okay now this is a uh uh immortal they're called immortal hydras okay see okay they're hydras um hydras are uh freshwater creatures that resemble a floating tube with grasping appendages at one end and a cluster of tentacles at the other. Okay, so, so there's that. Understand that. Now, when I look this up, this is what came up. This is what came up. Look at that. A proselyte entity. Entity. A proselyte. Okay. So, so now, and what was also with that was this. Okay. See it right up there? So now I'm going to read this. The biblical term proselyte is an angelicization of the Kone Greek term, and then it has something in Greek, I guess, which I can't read, uh, as used in the Septuagint for a stranger. It's used in the Septuagint, the Greek Septuagint, for a stranger, a newcomer, a newcomer, a, a newcomer to Israel, a sojourner in the land, a foreigner, a sojourner in the land, right? And that is uh, in the Greek New Testament and first century, first century Greek, I guess. So anyways, understand this. Um, <laughs> the Bible says we're foreigners, aliens coming into a foreign land. Here, sojourning. Sojourning, meaning you've left your home, your, your place of origin, and you've went into a foreign land. That's like our soul left its home and went into a foreign land, our bodies, and our bodies are a kingdom that's been divided, okay? Good and evil, light and darkness, an eternal spiritual being that's immortal, immortal, like that hydra, that took on a dying, decaying physical being, went into it. And unless you're reconciled, you know, your relationship is reconciled back to God by faith in Jesus Christ, if you die in this condition, you your soul that's trapped within your body, which is your prison suit. We're not born into life. We're born into death and condemnation. 
See, that's people don't understand that. This world was like a punishment. We left our first estate where we lived in complete peace and harmony with God in his garden. Okay, specifically Eden. Look at the word paradise in Luke 23, 42 or 42, 23. Something like that. The one Jesus was on the cross between Jesmus and Desmus, the good thief, the bad thief, right? And he said to the one, today you'll be with me in paradise. Take a deep study of that word and see where it is and where our first parents fell from. All this. Anyways, um, you have to be able to separate the physical from the spiritual. And it's difficult. It's almost impossible. It's a, it's a miracle when Christ opens your eyes and you're able to see it. And you can see the spiritual all around you in everything. It's And it is. It's in everything. It's so crazy. Um, so, anyways. So, this that's going into our bodies, which is like a mortal being, is going to cause our bodies to die. Right? It causes us to die. And... and our soul comes into our bodies, and our body causes us to die. Okay, it, it's a it, it's a mortal, an immortal that took on a mortal thing. Our bodies are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And and this is playing out in this world. Understand that, and it and it stops the flow of blood, right? What's happening to, you know, everybody? I you know, look up these things for yourself. What's happening more and more, even in children everywhere? What's happening? You know, I'm not even going to say the medical terms for it, but. Understand what's happening. It stops the flow of blood. And what do we say by the blood of Christ, right? So, I mean, man, I, I just hope you can catch this. And like I said, I'm going to attach um, a couple of videos, and I hope you watch them. And uh, it should wake you up. It should really wake you up. Because the spiritual is being played out in this physical. And it's going to happen. Now, now, you know, I know I've showed this once before. Okay, I'll let you read that. What's going on here? See, we're supposed to be governed by God. We're supposed to give Christ the seat, the throne of our heart to govern and lead us and guide us as the good shepherd, right? But the government of this world wants to keep us deceived, right? Through lies and deceit and make us under complete subjection to them. Look, we don't live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic that's based on freedom, the liberty based on the rights given to us by God, by our creator, Okay, understand that. Um, now, a democracies all throughout history have failed miserably. They degenerate into a dictatorship. And then uh, they uh, degrade the people into a, a, a serfdom, like serfdom. You will own nothing. The government will. All your sustenance will come from the government. And these large corporations that are following all the government mandates and rules and regulations. And basically... You, you become a serf, you know, you own nothing, you're just sub existing to, to just survive, basically, while the government takes and consumes all your labor, you know, all the fruits of your labor, all the fruits of your labor. Like, and what we're born again, led by Christ, we're supposed to produce fruit for Christ, for his government, right? Help turn people, but it's not through force and oppression and all that. It's it's by just laying it like the showbread, the manna that came down from heaven in front of someone else's tabernacle, their body, their temporary dwelling place, their physical form, the abode of light and darkness. You're supposed to lay it before their temple and say, well, here's the information. You can either take it in and consume it, right? And it becomes part of you, or you can not. It's up to you. It's, it's free will. It's all about free will. God never forces anything on anybody. He's not going to force, okay? Uh, but he does punish, and he does allow us to reap what we sow, and all these things, but, uh, you know, so understand that, so if you get the chance, check out the two videos, they're not really long, they're, they're, one of them's maybe, I don't know, about maybe 15 minutes, maybe, 15, 20 minutes, and the other one's real short, like, just a few minutes, and uh, watch the short one first, it's uh, X-Files, a thing from X-Files. Watch that one first. Okay, so there's that. God bless you. Let's all wake up spiritually. The truth is being revealed. It's almost time to go home. There's no doubt about it. I feel it in my very soul. And I felt it for a long time, for a very long time. I've been preparing and warning people for this for, you know, ever since, man, probably the mid-90s, mid, mid, -90s, mid to late 90s, you know. So be prepared. This place isn't our home. That's our home. That's literal. That's literal, not metaphorical. Understand that. And if you can understand, our bodies are the tree of them. Knowledge of good and evil. And look at that word Elohim. Angels. Angels. It's defined as angels multiple times. Not like we're taught in the churches, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. Angels, judges, magistrates, special possessions of the supreme God. Part of the one true God. Okay. 
look at that. And these people who read it and just say, oh, Elohim, Elohim, Elohim. Anything in him is plural. And it means us. It means many in one. But it can mean all one and one body in Christ as well. I, I mean, just understand that. And you have good angels, bad angels. You've got uh, angels that are still doing God's will and connected to him. And you've got fallen angels who are in a different form now and all kinds of things. And that, that there's just so much that goes into that. I hope you can... It, it, rightfully divide his word and understand it and christ said he came to reveal the truth not conceal it and christ is god incarnate the word that was made flesh it's only concealed and hidden from those who are lost okay so who who conceals the matter in proverbs 25 2 it says elohim but who's elohim psalms 82 6 psalms 82 6 says we are all elohim children of the most high god but we have fallen like one of his princes the stars from heaven we're a star from heaven, one of his princes that fell, thinking we could become like the Most High God, okay? Knowing good and evil, but we've missed the mark. We've missed the goal, which is the definition of sin. We've all fallen into sin. We've missed that goal, right? That's why he came here to redeem us and restore us and to reveal the truth to us so we can repent and turn back to him and go back home where we came from. I know it sounds crazy, but we've been deceived. We've been led astray like sheep to the slaughter. And uh, hopefully we all wake up before it's time to go because it's getting close. All right, God bless you. Love and respect to everybody. Keep planting those seeds. Have a great day. Bye.